maybe we just start with um, perhaps one of the headlines. 19-year-old lock from Exeter, Christ to Shinwa. What uh, made you think that he, he's ready now for international rugby? Well, on the selection, we're looking at uh, the here and now, obviously, uh, but we're also looking at the Rugby World Cup 2023. And we think, and Chris, we've got a young man who uh, is a, a great athlete. Um, he's got a good skill set on him. He obviously lacks game time at senior rugby. Uh, he's in a good place in Exeter in terms of uh, working under Rob Baxter and what's going on there. Um, so really, it's a discussion I had with Chris um, post the under-20 Six Nations, uh, where we've been monitoring him, obviously. Um, he's one that just as a six, we believe, going forward, that can cover second row. Um, that's the first point I'd make. Um, he brings something that nobody else in the country probably has in terms of his height, athleticism. So really, uh, it's getting him now involved at an early stage uh, for his development. Um, whether he'll play rugby uh, in this series, time will tell. But uh, certainly we want to get him in, get him around the senior players and get him used to the environment. Another English based player, Thomas Young. Obviously, he's back in your thoughts. You've obviously got the go ahead to select him now that he's joining Cardiff next season. You've got to go ahead to select him ahead of this. I mean, obviously, you've got a few issues at open side, but was this something you were looking to do anyway? No, well, it's something that uh, has definitely been forced upon us. Under the 60 cap rule, we knew that we couldn't select Thomas. Uh, we've had, I think, six uh, open side flankers go down um, with injury being ruled out. So I think on the weekend just gone, you know, we went to watch Josh Navidi. He went down on the Saturday night. Then we're at the Scarlets game on a Sunday. Another seven, Dan Davis, went down injured. Um, so it's just uh, been a, a you know, a perfect storm in that position, really. Um, Thomas has uh, form under his belt, playing in a, in a strong league. Uh, he's played for Wales before. He's played international rugby, uh, 29 years of age. He's got the maturity. Uh, and when you look at the opposition, um, we felt that it was special circumstances for this particular competition. So we've asked for um, the ability to select them. And uh, I'm very happy to say that um, common sense has prevailed on this occasion. I mean, you've tried that way before successfully, and for, you know, with Reese Webb and possibly not with Reese Priestland. You, you, you good. You're happy that the right decision to be made on this occasion. Yeah, I mean, we've asked on three occasions, as you as you rightly point out, and on each occasion, it's we've felt that it's been necessary um, to assist the team to to get the performances that we're after, and this is no different. People would love to see Alice Jenkins and Gareth Anscombe back in the squad after their long injuries. Um, it's great, isn't it, that they're back after being two years out and you've been able to name them, uh, Wayne? Yeah, and if you look at the case of, of the, the standoff position and the seven position we've just talked about, both players, by their own admissions, are probably not back to 100% where they'd like to be, um, probably more around the 80% mark. Um, but when you look at the experience that they have, the ability to play at this level previously and the job they've done at this level, I think that's counted for a lot in terms of the discussions. We've had uh, lengthy discussions on both those players, uh, spoke to both the players before naming them, also uh, their club coaches. So, you know, there's been a, a bit of input from outside people as well. And uh, just to make sure that we're not putting them out there when they're at risk. Obviously, we're going into a higher level of rugby from that they've been playing in recent weeks. But um, they'll be monitored accordingly. Um, and it's not our intention to play uh, those players throughout the whole campaign. And Gareth's obviously played four games to the Ospreys. Ellis is a bit more. So was there a bit more discussion around Gareth? Well, you know, you really got to look at it. And uh, unfortunately, Jared Evans has taken a, a knock uh, after about 10 minutes of rugby in the season. Um, so he hasn't played. Uh, we look at summer form. We look at um, Six Nations, previous form at international level with Gareth. Um, and we look at, um, you know, what they're doing in the here and now. And uh, so, you know, our options at 10, a bit like seven, were depleted. So we've called on the experience that Gareth brings along with Reese Priestland. And you mentioned Reese there. He hasn't played for four years. Nice to see him back in the fold after he's come back to Cardiff. Yes. And, um, you know, he's enjoying being back in Wales. He's enjoying playing for Cardiff. And, uh, you know, he brings a wealth of experience, uh, certainly, you know, parts of their game, both of them, um, uh, are, are top draw at the moment, goal kicking being one of them, so which is important in international rugby. Final one on that, presumably Josh Navidi is out for the autumn for you after his shoulder. Yeah, before we go to Josh, obviously, yeah, you mentioned Liam Williams as well. So Liam, um, you know, he's had the appendix uh, removed. That was uh, not the best of timing for, for anybody, uh, at least me. Uh, Liam, who was very disappointed, but he is back. He is um, obviously being monitored. Uh, we won't rush him back until uh, until he's fully fit. And then to Josh as well. 
Yeah, look, really, really disappointing. Um, you know, the last time we had the luxury of playing Josh was in the Six Nations. We saw the impact that he made. He, he is a, a top-class international rugby player, covers uh, the whole back row. So to lose somebody like him um, in that fashion, um, you know, we just hope he makes a speedy recovery. In your press conference, uh, quote, Wayne, you... Um alluded to the fact that maybe some of the players you picked haven't been in top form. Is, is, is that is that fair comment? And if so, how have they got the nod perhaps over players who perhaps are in better form? Um, we look to, to, to see who's in better form than who. But um, you just got to look back to last weekend. I don't think anyone, any of the clubs would have been happy with their form. Uh, certainly you've just got to look and listen to players' post-match interviews. Uh it, it, it's an early time in the season for us. Uh, some rugby players aren't hitting their straps. There's no doubt about that. In some positions, uh, we're in a position of um, saying, well, look, we're picking between these two or three players and really we're not happy with the form of all, all of those players. So then we look back at the investment we've had in players. We look at their form in, say, summer series, whether that was good, bad or indifferent, and also the successful uh, squad that we had in the, um, in the Six Nations and what part they played there. Final one from me. Can you sum up the autumn challenge and the fact that you're playing New Zealand without new English-based players? Yeah, I don't think the challenges in rugby get any bigger than that. Um, but I just want to make the comment on there's a lot of talk around why we're playing them at that time and it's, um, you know, it, it, it sort of lessens the, the occasion. The occasion, first and foremost, for these players and management is going to be huge. Um, we've all missed um, playing in front of live crowds and to have a, a sellout at the Principality that's exciting for everybody that's going to be involved. To have the All Blacks, you know, ranked in the top two teams in the world and then Springboks a week later, the challenges don't get any bigger. So there's going to be massive learnings for players. And if you're a player, I guess you're looking at it and saying, there's a huge opportunity opportunity for me to perform. And if I do that on this stage against this opposition, then uh, I put myself in good shape for selection further down the track. And, you know, when you're just under two years out from a Rugby World Cup, the players are focused on on coming into international rugby and performing and hoping that, um, you know, they impress and stay on the side for the, the coming months. It is, it is it is going to be a big task. We know that. 60-odd years of history would, would tell you that with uh, with everybody available at times. So, look, it's uh, the challenges don't get any bigger, but the reason for having this game I wholeheartedly agree with. We need funding uh, in the game for whatever reason. Um, we're in the situation we're in, and... Um, Without this funding, I think, um, you know, uh, it would be a lot tougher on clubs and players alike and the union to proceed the way we'd like to. And, and over to me, when on that note as well, hi, it's Beth, by the way. Um, you know, if you're going to win World Cups, as we've seen with, with lots of teams, you have to have the depth in your squad. And, and, and this game against New Zealand, perhaps not with some of your star players, will give those players coming up a chance to do that as well. Yeah, original thoughts on this. No, you're right. The original thoughts on this November series was that we wanted to tighten down on the on the players used, and really drill down to sort of 40, 45 players from here on into the World Cup, or uh, depending on injuries, obviously. But as we've seen with the All Black match and then with the injuries that we have had, which is unfortunate in the in the game that we get these injuries, um, uh, we are going to look at a lot more players than we probably would have anticipated looking at. So it is a great opportunity for those players, and that's certainly the way that we're going to look at it. Well, I can't believe it's a year since last autumn, which was very different for you and the team. But given that we're two years away from a World Cup, probably only 20 odd matches to go. How close are you to kind of getting the team that you want and the style that you want as well? Well, I think on paper, we're very close. Uh, the, the trick is now going to get them all fit and healthy at the same time. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, so long as that happens at the World Cup, I'll be really, really happy. Um, but certainly you, you can't forecast what's going to happen with rugby players playing this contact sport. So, yeah, we sort of, um, we, we know we've got a wish list of players, if you like, um, but those players need to maintain form closer to the World Cup and obviously be fit and available. And just a note again about the crowds, because, you know, I was there at the Six Nations. It's weird with, you know, for players, for journalists, for anyone watching, but I think the fans have missed it more than anyone. So a note for them as well. Uh, 100%, you know, out in the community now, people we bump into, they're just so excited. Yeah, they'd love to see the Six Nations champions, uh, full squad playing the All Blacks. But um, I think everybody's excited and can't wait to get to the venue. You know, it's uh, the whole driving up Westgate Street and the bus. You've got to remember, you know, players like a Callum Sheedy, for example, has played about 10 tests now, hasn't played in front of that crowd and having that experience. And the older players talk about it. And, you know, I heard Jonathan... Uh, 
Jonathan Davies in an interview some time ago talking around, you know, he's missing that and can't wait for the crowds to come back. So I think it's the same for everybody, players, management and supporters. Um, and for that fact alone, you know, I, I just can't wait for, for that day to come and um, having crowds back is just going to be magnificent. And, and last question for me, just a note on Thomas Hume again. I mean, he's been in incredible form um, over in England. He was man of the match last week. And it does give you a different option, doesn't he, in that position, in terms of what he gives as a player? Yeah, well, certainly um, we need experience. You know, there's going to be a lot of youth in the squad as it is um, with, with some of the injuries. So we need some experience in the squad. And Alice Jenkins brings some experience. He's played against all these the, the opponents that will be playing. Um, so he brings that knowledge in, in with him. Um, Thomas has played at a high level of rugby, as you say. He's a form player. So um, I think those two are welcome additions. And uh, we'll just have to see how they all uh, come in uh, after a couple of, uh, or a round of club games to go. Uh, hi, Wayne. Um, there were reports overnight in England that Eddie Jones can pick players that are not double jabbed. I just want to know what the situation was uh, with your squad. Is, is that the case? Are all the players double jabbed? What's the, the WIU's policy on it? Um, I haven't checked in the last 24 hours, but um, a short time ago, we were right up there. Uh, I think there's only a couple of two or three players that haven't been double jabbed. Um, and I think uh, we're about one management uh, person left to go. So uh, we're in a pretty good space. We uh, Our testing regime doesn't change. Um, we have been uh, squeaky clean touch wood for the last couple of campaigns. And um, so it does look from the outside that COVID rules have been relaxed. But in terms of our rugby environment, once we come into camp uh, on Sunday night, Monday, uh, we're in, a, we're in a, a bubble as we were for the last two campaigns. So the players won't be going home. They'll be in for the full week. Um, they get to go home for 24 hours after a test match and they're back in for the full week again. So that'll happen for the five weeks. Um, we aren't releasing players back to club rugby in the back end because those teams are in and around the community. But this... Um, this uh, virus is, is, is as strong as it ever was in terms of its numbers in the community. So, you know, there's so much at risk in these games in terms of what's at stake in terms of the revenues. Um, we don't have the luxury of a club team where you can put it off for a weekend, a month or two later. So we will be in that strict bubble, even though the public will be doing what they're doing.